I'm standing out in the northwest corner of our six acre location in Trumansburg, New York, and Juan and I put in a whole lot of effort uh, yesterday and today during this really cold moment um, to make some headway on some infrastructure projects, think about getting organized for making charcoal, and get a whole lot of mulch queued up for the spring. I thought I'd share some notes about how we went about all that, so stick around. Once it gets cold enough that the ground seizes up pretty rock hard, and that is definitely the case now. We had single digits last night, lots lots of wind. We'll be going below zero Fahrenheit in the next few evenings. A uh, little bit of snow cover, but not a lot, so it's still easy to get around. So it's a great time to do a lot of movement of materials. So in this little glade in here, we've got this uh, biochar making kiln. I talked about this in another video. I'll link to that here. Really neat design that this fellow Andy came up with. Uh, it's like a cone pit, but uh, compatible with frozen tundra landscapes. So we've got all these branches queued up. We're basically thinning and clearing a little, opening up the canopy, clearing out dead branches. So it's great activity on real cold days like this to use a pole saw and a lightweight electric chainsaw and do some canopy lifting. Plus it's an opportunity as the winter sun comes through. Yesterday was kind of sunny and brutally cold. It's an opportunity to start thinking about pruning branches in a way to let winter sun in. There could be um, a space that somebody lives someday here, and we've got some other agricultural infrastructure that we're starting to build, which I'll talk about in a moment, and thinking through how to get light to flow into those spaces in the winter months. That's an opportunity on a cold day too. We set posts for a couple outbuildings before this cold snap came in. So there's four posts for this structure, which I'll explain in a moment, and a whole pile of posts, what is that, 12 posts over there, all black locust, uh, split, hand peeled, and set with a post hole digger and a rock pounder to hammer in stones and clay. So there's no cement in there. And now that the ground is frozen, we can start working on the above ground aspects of these structures. So this is a little eight by 10 uh, outbuilding. You can guess what might go on in there. I'll give you a few seconds to look around the frame and decide what might happen in there. And the idea is, uh, again, round pole. I mean, this theme comes through in this landscape all the time. Super easy to build with, really beautiful, really strong. This whole structure um, is, we're in about maybe $3 so far, and that's just for the timber lock screws. And the rest we sourced on site or from a waste stream locally. And this will have a plastic uh, greenhouse poly cover. So we have purlins that will go on, and then we took an old tire from our friend Tony. It's a blown out tractor tire under there. And we'll use some heavy duty snips and put that tire, the rubber, over each of the purlins so we can stretch greenhouse plastic but not have it rip. And so this will be a nice little 80 square foot place to come and relax and do certain things and probably will cost less than 10 bucks to build. Uh, so we'll make some updates as that goes along. We're going to use sheet metal roofing for really nice privacy and then polycarbonate panels and maybe woven with scanthus grass. Get playful with that. This space will be a 16 foot by 24 foot barn space with a shed roof pitched to the north. So it'll be open to allowing summer or uh, fall and spring sun to penetrate deeply in for natural light. And will probably be a storage space, maybe a workshop as well. We'll see how that all unfolds. This will have a sheet metal roof on it and we'll be building tables out of these split and peeled locust staves. So we'll make some really sturdy internal infrastructure so we can have uh, hand powered tools and maybe some solar powered tools to do woodworking in this space in the winter months. So a really great opportunity uh, in this cold time to be moving these ash poles around, getting a rough idea where all the headers are going, who will be where, trimming them up a little. And then Juan's been doing the hard work of peeling these which is a great time to get the bark off in good ways. So we'll, the floor of this whole space will be made out of peelings, which will have a nice feel to it. It'll be like a mulched floor since it's a workshop anyway. But yeah, fun stuff to do on a really cold, crispy day for sure. I think what we're gonna organize ourselves around is the idea of setting up this charcoal kiln. Uh, next few days it gets down single digits by day and below zero at night. And so the thought was we could be doing a charcoal session, cleaning up all these pruned branches. And while doing that, take the sawhorses and these poles and bring them over so we can be peeling logs 
in this area right next to the fire, feeding the fire and also peeling and gets a couple of stacked functions done there. So we'll have to plan in advance and harvest a bunch of ice from the frozen ponds and put them in buckets next to this so it melts during the process. <laughs> we'll, we'll share notes, but it'll be really nice to tidy this all up and get a whole bunch of really pure, beautiful charcoal for the use in that structure. It's been fun experimenting with these different uh, battery powered tools. This is a new one to us, it's a Makita 14 inch chainsaw. Really lightweight, uh, pretty peppy. Doesn't last very long, these batteries aren't uh, immensely powerful. But what's nice, it's the same platform as our impact driver and our screw gun. And so we can come out here with a little battery bank uh, and an inverter and be able to swap batteries through and be recharging and this so far has been a really great tool for making all of our uh, recess joints and you know rough cuts to get in there with a pencil and use this to shave and it's been working pretty nicely as a, a catch-all tool highly recommended we've been plugging away at these spaces it's nice to just chip away if it gets too cold for us um, we then switch gears and go into something that's a little bit more robustly physical and i'll talk about what that was yesterday during the extreme part of the cold, especially with all the wind, it made more sense to be doing some more hardcore physical stuff. So I'll share what we were up to with that. It's amazing, still persimmons up in the tree. The deer come to that every single day. I stopped eating them because now it's really one of the few things the deer have in this landscape. So we just let them come each day, maybe give it a shake once in a while. But I'm on my way to where yesterday and today we cached a whole bunch of round bills of mulch. We've got this beautiful relationship with an older farmer in our area, and he's got a tractor with a spear on it. I have a two-wheel drive truck, so unless the ground is really frozen or really dry in the summer, I can't drive back here. Um, but we were able to take two bales at a time. He loaded it up, up with the tractor, and with the frozen ground, we did no damage to his fields, which was really nice. And then backed into position, put a big old rope around them, tied it to a tree and drove off. <laughs> that system worked well enough Then we could use metal bars to lift and move them around. So now we've got uh, a six, six or eight bales here, a little bit more, and four more in another spot. And they're all staged right out of the way, but nearby all these new production areas that are coming to production this spring. So we'll let the deer poke at them a little bit, but I don't think hay is all that great for them to eat. So we'll probably have to put actually a deer fence around this so that they're not tempted to eat something that's not good for them. Maybe somebody in the comments, could you share notes? I think for the most part, this is decent quality hay. There might be a fair bit of clover in some of them. Uh, any experience there? If it's dried, hey, is it okay for deer to eat? Maybe we'll leave some out for them. And I know they like to sleep under this pine tree, so maybe we'll flake some hay so they have some nice pads to sleep on too. Why not? The rest of this production area is locked up pretty darn hard from how deeply things are frozen. So it's nice seasonally to have these different areas where we can push and make headway that are physically and mentally different activities. Especially in the winter, anything we do now is kind of bonus because otherwise we'd just be sitting inside, which is fine, I'm doing those things too, but it's nice to make headway. And the rest of this landscape can rest, stay rock solid, frozen. We can't even get into the waterways to dig and evolve those. So it's good, the landscape gets to rest and the wildlife gets to be out here with us a little less annoyingly poking around and doing stuff all the time. <laughs> I can come out once in a while and grab some high bush cranberries for folks that are in the know. This is one of the grossest and yet amazing fruits. I'm not encouraging you to eat them. A little bit like a rotten milk vibe in there, but so much, so much vitamin C. Kind of neat to have those little red orbs floating in the landscape. It's another really wonderful activity on the coldest of the days. The snow comes down so fine, so powdery that it makes some amazing prints. I wonder who that is. It looks like, well, there's my hand. Bigger than our cat, cat-like. Does anybody know? The nails are out. That's a big, wide foot. I wonder who's moving through this landscape. It's definitely predator vibes. I wonder if they'll help with the voles and the rabbits who we see. 
tremendous numbers of. Anyway, I should get back to cleaning stuff up and finalizing what we were working on today. But I thought it was fun to share some notes. At least for me, the colder it gets, the more exciting it is to try to get stuff done. It all feels like bonus work. And you sleep a lot better when you've been out in the brisk air. I just love cold, cold air. So good. Anyway, what are you folks up to? You doing anything fun in colder climates? Are you somewhere a lot warmer? Are you making headway? on designs and dreams with your gardens. Be cool to hear what other folks are doing in these wintry lulls. Thanks for watching, take care. Pretty nice. <laughs>